In this video, I will show you how to use splines to control procedural generational elements such as paths and walls. This is following on from my previous introduction to using PCG for services, and I will be continuing with the same scene. For the creation of this forest, we used a volume to define the area along the landscape surface to generate along. This time we will be using a spline. We will begin first by creating a new blueprint where we can define this spline. So first right click in the content browser, select blueprint class, actor, and name it BP underscore spline. Let's open this up and expand. We will add two components from here on the top left. These will let us specify which spline and PCG graph to use. So first let's find spline. And next let's add the PCG graph. When you select the PCG component, you can see there's a slot to drop the graph into in the details panel. So next we can create the procedural logic by creating the PCG script to attach to this blueprint. In the content browser, I'll scroll down to my previously made PCG folder. Right click and find PCG. Let's call it PCG underscore fence. Back in the blueprint, if I open this and move it to the side, we can assign the PCG script we just made to that graph slot in the details panel. I will minimize this and drag and drop this blueprint directly into our scene, where we have a basic spline. From here, we can drag the control points to stretch this out and define the path we want our fence to follow. You can change the height, although it doesn't matter so much, since we're projecting the points to the landscape in our script anyway. Now we'll just keep it as a simple line for now. I'll go back to our PCG graph to populate this spline. So let's find it and double click to open out. In the last video, we sampled the surface, but this time, as you may guess, we'll be using the spline sampler. We need two starting nodes, the get spline data and then the spline sampler. The get spline data by default is set to self. This means that it will try to look for the spline that is connected to in this graph through the blueprint. So you can see that these two components in the blueprint will talk to each other. Back in the graph, attach this to the spline sampler. In the details panel, change the spline sampler dimension to distance so we can set a fixed amount. This amount will be dependent on the asset size or friend size in this example that you want to array along this spline. But 200 will be fine for now. We can add some geometry straight away to this. So add a static mesh spawner. Then under mesh entries, press this plus button, expand it to the descriptor section and select the mesh you want. I will just pick this cube so that you can see the PCG already working. There's still quite a bit of work to do, especially with the floating boxes, but we can choose a fence first and then adjust the parameters. I have already downloaded a mega scan fence. You can pick any asset you like, but remember you will need to adjust the spacing to match each of these assets. Some of these meshes are also more difficult to make a curve around a corner. But I'll get to that later. I will select a wooden fence, but you could also export an FBX or wall or fence module from Rhino or some other 3D software and bring that in. So let's change the spacing to 150. So actually this overlap is looking pretty good. When we drag the spline, it automatically adds the fence along the set increment. We can adjust the distance to make this match better. This is perfect for a straight line, but when you start to curb it, you'll find problems. A quick solution for some situations is just to add a transform points node to control the offsets. I'll hold out and click this Y to break it, and then connect the transform points node in the middle. In the details panel, we can change the min and max offsets on either side of the spline to help with the turns. 
this value needs to be half of your spline sampler spacing. So as you remember, we used 150. So let's enter minus 75 for the min and the max. And you can see for this example, it does a decent job. If you have more extreme curves and complex geometries, you will have to develop a more complex workflow using the orient point component. But I will leave that for a more advanced video as these scripts can become very complex. Next, let's fix the floating fence issue. Go back to the start of the graph and search for projection. We want to project this to the landscape. So we can find a reference in the input if we expand it here, and then connect the nodes. Snip the connection to the spline sampler and then fit the project to the spline sampler. Then it will work straight away and adapt the landscape as you re-sculpt it. We can switch out the geometry for a more complex one to check if it still works. So I will add a stone wall from the Megascans library. You can see that you need to adjust the distances in the spline sampler. If you check the geometry beforehand for the dimensions, it will be easier to match. Otherwise, it's just a bit of trial and error as here. Then likewise, adjust the transfer points offset to half of this distance. Still, it's quite not right, so we need to tweak these values again. It is looking better and works for certain parts, although this modular wall, to be honest, isn't particularly designed to curb, and so it works better for smaller curves or straight lines. Although you can play with the vertical offsets and use more complex workflows to rotate and orient the points. I will show you another great use for this spline workflow, which you may use often and that is for creating paths. It can be done in the same way using 3D assets, but using decals is an efficient way to do this. I will duplicate the graph, calling it PCG underscore paths. I'll go to my blueprints folder and also duplicate this spline blueprint to speed up the process. Let's call it BP underscore paths. I will zoom out to find a nice spot for the path, then drag out the blueprint. It still has our wall, so we need to switch that out with the correct graph and asset. So double click the blueprint to open it up, select PCG component, and in the details panel, switch it to the path we made. Then find that PCG graph and open it up too. I will delete the place actors node and transform points. Let's keep the rest. Since it is still based on a spline that we project to the landscape, we can extend it out a bit more in the viewport. From the spline sampler, we want to add a bounds modifier. The bounds modifier gives a thickness to the spline and useful for culling other geometries. We can change the bounds to 100 to offset on both sides and debug to see the width. This will be projected to landscape since we kept that node. Add a spawn actor node this time and we have a choice of different classes to spawn. The details panel choose the decal actor. Also select the no merging option keep these as separate actors. You can also layer decals together and set the sort order for which goes on top, which is very useful. Make sure the allow template actor editing is checked and it will allow you to add a decal material down here. I've added a path decal from the Quixel bridge for this example. And you can also search for decal and then path. They have a great collection of natural looking paths. I'll use the forest one and add it to the material slot. And then you can see the immediate effect. You may need to change the distance again as I can see some gaps. I will do this in the spline sampler and adjust a bit of trial and error for the sizing. Let's drag this further down the slope 
you can see the projection is stretching out the distance. So let's decrease the distance increment just a bit more. Great. And turn off the debug. It is following the slope quite nicely. And this method can be combined with other PCG workflows. For example, if you wanted to make the path and remove trees that it overlaps with. To show this technique, I will make another dense forest to show how we can call areas based on this path. In 5.3 version of Unreal, if you go to the modeling mode, select draw spline and check loop, we can draw an area roughly to show our new forest area. You can do this by clicking directly in the viewport. But you'll see this is very difficult to draw a spine precisely this way. So let's delete this, change the view to top view, and now it's much easier to define a region. Click accept and change back to perspective mode. You can adjust the Z values of the points. However, that height doesn't really matter as we will be projecting to the landscape again. In the previous example, we attached the spline directly to the blueprint, the component. I will show you a second useful method. In the details panel of the slide, search for tag, add an array, and give it a tagging name, such as trees. This will be used as a reference in the PCG graph without needing to use blueprints. Back in the PCG, I will make some space to add a new forest. And you can see that you can easily combine multiple scripts and geometries in one graph and make them interact with each other. So let's copy the spline data, project and spline sampler, then connect the landscape to the projection. What is the main difference here is that in the get spline data, we will want to change the actor filter to all world actors so that they can find the spline in our world view. It will give you the actor selection option we by tag automatically. And all that is needed is to simply add the tag name that we previously made. Just make sure it's spelt correctly. Then add a static mesh spawner. And like usual, add some arrays to the mesh entries for our tree geometry. Under the descriptor section, I'll add a couple of trees for now. Back in the viewport, you see that nothing has happened. That is because our spline sampler is set to on spline. So let's change that to on interior. It works, but it is incredibly dense. So let's reduce the sampling spacing. It looks a bit like a plantation now, but you can vary the effects using the techniques I showed in the previous video. Now let's cut a path through this. We will be using one node called difference. This will take the points generated from the path and intersect them with the points generated from this plantation, removing the overlaps. And add the difference node. Then reconnect the rest of the nodes. Nothing has seemed to change. So let's increase the bounds modify to check that the path is wide enough. And turn on the debug. That is looking fine. So it might mean we have missed one step in the difference node. Select the node and in the details, there are a few settings. It is in the density function that we need to change this to binary. And now it is working perfectly. There's a tree on this path, but that's because it is from a different forest that was made separately from this PCG. And we can simply just delete that and turn off the debug as we don't need it. As we zoom out now, we can see the culling effect. I'll move this old forest out the way. And maybe that spline distance needs to be changed again since there is a visible gap. And about 350 seems to do a better job. Okay. And now as I move the spline, 
it will dynamically cut out the trees and project the path along the slope. The path is also dynamically projected along the landscape. Following the techniques I showed in the previous video, you can then make a more natural looking forest. Since that is already covered, I won't go over that again, so I'll just speed through changing the sampling spacing, adding transform points to rotate the trees and adding some noise and density filters to make the distribution more organic and varied. And you can add plenty of more trees, landscape elements and decals to make it more realistic. I've just scratched the surface with procedural generation with splines, but you can see the potential to create fast, reusable and complex environments. This is also a great basis for creating buildings and configuring levels and facade types, which I'll take a look at in future videos.